What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and today I'm going to tell you about the absolute worst helmet I have ever spent money on, bar none. Not only the worst helmet that I've ever spent money on, but maybe the worst money I've ever spent. This was an awful waste of money and a terrible experience. And no, it's not a Rurok. I would never even buy a Rurok, and you know why? Well, because they don't make modulars, and I only wear modular helmets, that's why. Yo, your old boy Shade Tree rocks it pure dad style. All right, now I gotta have a helmet that flips up to sip on my drink when I'm on the road. You guys who keep up with the videos will already know which helmet I'm talking about because I bought this helmet several months ago and I said, hey, initially I wasn't super sure about it, but it was cheaper than the helmet I usually buy. Uh, so, uh, you know, I decided to take a chance on it because it's a really big brand name that has an, a, just an absolutely stellar reputation. Uh, that was a chance that did not pay off. But you know, I like to give things a chance and I don't like to review something that I just unboxed and wore one time. And at this point, I can say that I've put this helmet through the ringer and it has come up so, so short. I have done everything from moto vlog in this helmet to commute in this helmet. I've worn it in the rain, the heat, the cold. I've been on two iron butts with it. I've been on multiple multi-state long distance trips with this helmet. I can say that I am incredibly qualified to give a real good review on someone not a real good review, it's a real bad review, but a real review on this helmet. And of course, the helmet I'm talking about is the Schuberth C3. I initially felt pretty good about buying this because Schuberth is just a, a storied brand. This is like the BMW GS Riders wet dream, Schuberth, the German helmet company. What a waste of money. What a literal piece of crap. This helmet is terrible. I owned a $200 HJC modular helmet that was miles better than this lid. Everything about it is so bad, I almost don't even know where to start. Let's start with the price. This helmet was $400. That ain't cheap. I'm sorry, guys. To me, cheap is 200 bucks. And even if this helmet was 200 bucks, I'd still be kind of like, eh, uh, Shay just got a Sedici that's way better than this, and that helmet was 200 bucks. You know you're doing bad when the store brand, like when Great Value brand makes a way better helmet than you do. And honestly, Shea's Sedici helmet is pretty nice. Like we bought it at Cycle Gear, it's the Cycle Gear brand. It's not bad at all. She loves it after taking a 2,000 mile trip on it. So we're also very qualified to say that that's a good helmet and 10 times the helmet than the Schubert C3 is. I wouldn't even call Sedici the Great Value brand. It's yeah, more like Kirkland brand at Costco. You know, you, you it's a, it's a a, not a name brand, but you know you're getting a good product. This, dude, this is great value. I actually owned a Schuberth before that I really liked, and I just, I can't believe how far they've fallen, how bad a helmet they put out. I'm just absolutely amazed that this says Schuberth on it. My last Schuberth helmet was amazing. This helmet is a piece of crap. All right, I gotta start somewhere and outline all the reasons it's a piece of crap. Like I said, starting with the price, $400 for this helmet just beyond the pale, absolutely a joke. This helmet also feels pretty dangerous. The way that the front mechanism closes, when you close it, it doesn't always latch right. So if you see here, it looks like it's closed, but it's not. And I just like, I can't imagine if you were in a wreck, like that this being halfway open like that is gonna do you any favors. And I cannot tell you how many times on the road I went to close this helmet like normal and then I pulled over and I found out that I actually hadn't closed the front. And not only that, but the fact that it can flex that much, the fact that it can flex that much and just not close properly right there, to me that just really, doesn't say a lot about the entire helmet's structural rigidity. The fact that it doesn't close properly, it's a $400 helmet that you just, you close the lid and half the time, it, there, it closed right that time. It, that should be enough. The fact that you, this is a $400 premium German helmet and it doesn't even close right half the time, that should be enough to be like, yeah, this helmet sucks and gets like negative star reviews. On top of that, it's also the hottest helmet I've ever worn in my life. The air ventilation on this thing is nil. On every other helmet I've ever owned, when you open the top vent, you can feel little jets of air touching the top of your head. It feels pretty good and it cools you off. Same thing when you open the front vent. Uh, you'll feel like some little bit of air 
air is circulating around your face and it really cools you off. You know what happens on this helmet? Absolutely nothing. This is by far the hottest helmet I've ever put on my face. And the, here's what's really bad about that. It's just in Florida, you sweat so much inside this helmet, even when you're moving down the highway. And being that it's a touring helmet, you really just, a lot of times you'll have the visor open anyway. I actually most of the time ride with the visor open. The problem is on every single bike that I own, the detents on this visor are so weak that this it just does this every single time. The second you open it up, the wind slams it back down at anything over 65 miles an hour. How the hell are you going to have a touring helmet that you can't leave the visor open on? It literally slams down the second you open it. Here's something else that's a huge problem with that. Since it has zero ventilation in the front, even with everything open, when you're in the rain and you're trying to leave the visor cracked because it's fogging up like crazy because there's no ventilation in it, you can't. And it slams down every single time and then there's no ventilation and it fogs up like crazy and you can't see anything. I can't tell you how many times in the pouring rain I had to pull over because this helmet was blinding me and wouldn't stay open in anything above 60 65 miles an hour it just immediately slams close and starts to fog up it was so bad i would stop at gas stations and get like little fold up napkins and stick them stick them in here and then close the helmet on it so it had something to prop it open it's so unacceptable it's it's beyond the pale a touring helmet and it was like this right out of the freaking gate too it's not like the detents wore out but guess what it's gotten even worse because they are wearing out already. And another thing about Schubert's is they're supposed to be some of the quietest helmets you can buy. And when you're doing iron butts, when you're on super long distance road trips, noise inside your helmet, like uh, like wind noise, can be so tiring. I don't know what it is. There's probably some sort of scientific explanation about it that my stupid monkey brain can't comprehend. But anyway, I do know that a noisy helmet will make you tired way faster. Schubert's are supposed to be quiet, except it's not. It's noisy. This is a very noisy helmet. Helmet. I don't know where they get off saying they're quiet helmets. This helmet is not quiet at all. This is an incredibly noisy helmet. Now I'm saying incredibly noisy, but incredibly noisy compared to my previous Shoei Neotech and compared to my pre previous Schubert that I had. I had a I had another Schubert besides this that was also a C3. I don't know what what changed. What changed between my old C3 and this one? My old C3 was like a Cadillac, man. You couldn't, it was so nice. When you close the vent, it was literally like an isolation chamber. This thing, God, it's horrible. I could feel like I can feel the wind blowing directly in my ears. Moving on, because yes, there's more, because this is the worst helmet I've ever purchased in every single way. Now, when you sweat profusely inside a helmet, because it's so freaking hot, you tend to really wear out Oh, oh, by the way, also, I couldn't fit a Senna in here. So I, I had a Senna, I tried to transfer the Senna off my old Shoei Neotech onto this helmet. And the, the, the stuff in here is so tight that literally when I put the Senna in into the pockets that are supposed to receive the speakers, it literally was crushing my ears. It was so bad. I, so I don't know how, I think they make a Senna specifically for the C3 because you can't just put a Senna in here. It's gotta be one that's made for this helmet. That's how bad it is. Back to the padding because I figured out something real quick about this helmet when I first started taking it apart to put my Senna in it. When you sweat profusely inside a helmet because it's so freaking hot, here's what happens. It's called chafing and you start to get a heat rash on your forehead and, and any other skin that's in contact with this because it's so full of sweat. This is what the interior of this helmet looks like after a couple of iron butts and a long distance trip. Let me tell you, dude, this is, this is revolting. This is absolutely disgusting. And Schubert, you should be ashamed of yourself for releasing this product. This is so freaking, I'm, I'm amazed at how terrible this helmet is. And trust me, I got a lot of leeway for stuff, man. I, I, can, I can make just about anything work. You know why I'm not a good reviewer? Because even when things have like tiny little problems or certain quirks, like they don't bother me. So I'm a bad reviewer. So I, I can deal with so, so many quirks. I'm, I love quirks. Look at some of the bikes I have. They're very quirky. They have a lot of issues. This helmet, everything was an issue. Everything about this helmet sucked which is why 
I had to make a review on it because I was so amazed that me, I can be so forgiving of things and I could not find one single redeemable quality about this helmet, not one. Every single aspect of this helmet is terrible. Luckily, there is actually an easy fix for the Schubert C3. Uh, I should have done it when I first got it. Um, I should have done it the first time. It's really easy uh, and it fixes literally every single problem with this helmet. Like every single problem with this helmet can be cured with one simple fix. And you know what that is? Buy a Shoei Neotech. That's what I should have done the first time. That fixes everything that's wrong because this is an amazing helmet and the Schubert is a piece of crap. I should have spent the money. That's what this is a lesson in. There's no deals on helmets. There's no good deal on a helmet. When you buy a helmet, buy the one that you know works. And if my helmet isn't made in Japan, guess what? I'm just not ever buying it again. I'm never gonna do it. If it doesn't say Shoei on the front, guess what, man? I'm not gonna spend the money on it because everything else that I've ever bought has let me down and this one hasn't. I had my old Shoei Neotech 1 for almost four freaking years and it performed absolutely amazing. You know what? I should have bought the Neotech 2. Bought this helmet, slipped it on my head. It was absolutely amazing right out of the gate. And I feel absolutely confident in saying that it's going to continue to be amazing because I have over four years of tricks, motovlogging, commuting, and everything in between on a Shoei Neotech 1. And that helmet was amazing. I don't think that they made the Shoei Neotech 2 any worse. Okay, new helmet calls for <laughs> yet another helmet setup. I've done videos like this before, but I'm just gonna go over what my GoPro setup for motor vlogging is real quick with you guys because people are always asking. I only use Hero 4s for helmet mounted cameras. The reason I still use a Hero 4 Black is because nobody complains about my video quality. It seems not really to be an issue whatsoever. They're cheap. I don't cry when they break. Uh, you can get, still get them on Amazon for a couple hundred bucks. The mic adapters for them are incredibly cheap. This uh, microphone adapter right here is like $7. The mic's like five or six bucks. I have links to all this stuff down below. I've never had any complaints about my audio and I'm able to still speak and be hear, heard very clearly with a visor completely open on a bike with no windshield at 80 plus miles an hour. I know this because I've done it before. One of the other reasons I really like using a Hero 4 is that also the battery eliminators for them are super cheap. I just have a battery pack here. I think this battery eliminator cable for the GoPro Hero 4 is like 20 bucks on Amazon. So literally this entire setup, if you want to make the ex have the exact same setup as me, make videos like me, you can get this whole setup for like 240 bucks, including the camera. I do have nicer GoPros. I have a Hero 7 and a Hero 9, but I'm very much in the school of if it ain't broke, don't don't fix it. The Hero 4 works for me just fine and until they, until I can't buy them anymore, I'm going to keep on using them. Other than that, we just need some GoPro mounts. Don't ever buy them from GoPro. They're so ridiculously overpriced. There are plenty of knockoff brands on Amazon. Just make sure that you have this 3M tape because this is what actually matters. Need that and a little bit of 3M Velcro and you can replicate my exact helmet setup. So before I actually stick anything on, I like to just kind of put my camera in here in the GoPro mount and see what it's going to look like on the helmet before I freaking attach anything. I put this on a Neotech before, the shape's pretty much the same, so I'm not really worried about it. It's gonna go right here. I actually bought this front mount off of, I think I got it off of Amazon too to try out because it seemed a little easier than having it slightly off to the side like this, but it won't allow me to use the uh, modular thing right here when the GoPro is attached to it. So I'm just gonna stick with the tried and true slightly off to one side mount. And once you stick it on there, I like to just press on it really good like that. We got a full contact patch there. And then literally walk away for a second and let this actually bond to the helmet. Because if you try to stick your, your GoPro on it right away, you're liable just to pull it right off. Right, now that that's bonded, what I do next is just take a little bit of 3M Velcro and I stick it right in there. And that's it. That's literally how I attach my uh, microphone inside my helmet. Nothing fancy, nothing special just a little bit of Velcro and a $5 microphone, and that's how I make my moto vlogs. Boom, there you have it. Shade Tree Surgeon helmet setup. I'll have the links for everything down below. Uh, so if you want to literally replicate my exact setup, you can. And I trust me, a lot of people have, and you will get the exact same sound quality that I have, which everybody always says is really good. And I'm telling you, you don't need to spend $30 on a mic. You don't need to spend $40, $20, five bucks. 
five dollars is what you need to spend on a microphone. Well, got a fresh new Shoei Neotech, got my GoPro all set up on it. There's only one thing to do now. Let's go for a ride. Well, when you're wearing a dad helmet, there's only one bike to test it out on. That's the dad jorts itself, the Harley Pan America. Ooh. Dad jorts indeed, man. This thing is sporty. Ooh, baby, I've been spending too much time on the gold wing. <laughs> That's the awesome thing about going back and forth from my old 1989 gold wing and this 2021 Pan America from Bert Harley Davidson is when you jump on a 150 horsepower dad rocket, man, you really, really know you're on something fast. Man, it just feels that much faster after getting off my old green pig, the Bangkok bagger. Oh yeah, <laughs> that already feels a lot better. At this point, my old helmet, the, the, the Schuber is a piece of crap. C3, give me a freaking break, dude. That visor would have already slammed down on my face on that helmet. Ooh, this one's got a nice crack feature too. Very nice. I like that a lot. This, uh, you can't see it, but this like slightly cracked thing, that is makes all the difference when you're traveling in the rain, okay? Just wearing it for a few minutes, I can already tell how many miles better the Shoei is than the, than the Schubert. And yeah, it's double the price. But look at me right now. Yes, it's double the price. It's uh, twice as much as the, as the Schubert was. But I had to buy two helmets. Now, who's the, really the dumb one here? I should have just spent the money in the first place. I tried to cheap out. I tried to get like a mid-grade helmet. I was like, oh, maybe I don't need to buy like the best of the best. The Neotech, in my opinion, is the best of the best. It is the best, bar none. There, nothing else even comes close. The best modular helmet you can buy. I already know that because I owned a Neotech 1. I've worn the Neotech 2 for a few minutes. I'm pretty confident in saying this is just as good as the other one. What's crazy is that literally nothing else even comes close to how good the Shoei Neotech is. Like the Schubert, not even, they're not even playing the same game. I'll tell you right now, if the Shoei smash and grand slam home runs in the majors, then the Schubert got picked last for the T-ball team, okay? That's the, that's the difference here. And I've worn a lot of different modular helmets. Like I said, the other Schubert I owned was good. I would consider it a good helmet. Still not even close to the Shoei. Hell, I didn't even mind the HJC I owned. I liked that a lot too. But once again, not even close to the Shoei. Just spend the money. You know me, I'm, I'm El Cheapo, not because I'm just a cheap guy and I'm always searching for the best value. It's because I don't have a ton of money. Like I'm not rich. I'm buying these helmets. I'm not getting any of this stuff for free. I do have a Revzilla affiliate link. Like if you guys want to follow that, they did give me one of those, but I didn't get this helmet for free. I bought this helmet. I bought the Schubert too. None of this stuff was for free. I paid my own money for it. And again, I'm always, I'm, I always like take a cheaper option, not because I'm like, oh man, I need to get the best deal because I'm so value conscious. It's literally just because I, I'm not rich and buying two helmets, it really pisses me off. That's why I made this review. I am, I am angry. I'm very angry right now that I had to buy two helmets because that Schubert sucks so bad. Hey, it's not like I didn't give it a chance. Oh. Wow, that's fucking... <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> As I was saying, it's not like I didn't give it a chance. I gave the Schubert a chance. I, I put probably six or 7,000 miles on the Schubert, okay? I gave it a chance, multiple road trips, multiple iron butts. Like, give me a break. I really, really tried to like that helmet because I spent money on it. But at the end of the day, it just freaking sucked. And probably about two months into owning it, I stopped trying to like it and I started saving up money to buy the Shoei that I should have bought in the first place. Talk about it being even more angry, <laughs> even more wearing the shoe berth while I'm saving money, while I'm saving my money to buy the Shoei. And every day I have to wear the shoe berth and put a couple bucks away to be able to afford the Shoei. I'm just getting angrier and angrier at that helmet every time I put it on my head. Ultimate insult to injury. The last road trip I took, I just was like, okay, I'm gonna spend the money. I'm gonna buy the Shoei. And it didn't come in and <laughs> I, I had to I had to wear the shoe berth on my road trip to the mountains anyway. I was just like, you gotta be freaking kidding me with this crap. And that just like, dude, that was the end of it. That was the end. I was like, oh my gosh, Schubert, you're dead. I can't believe you did this to me. Schubert, you're dead to me. 
I cannot believe you did this. And as I said, I'm not sponsored. I have like I have a Revzilla affiliate link. You can follow that if you want. If you want to check out the shoe or check out anything else, I've actually never put it down there before. I don't really know how it works. They gave it to me a long time ago. I know some other people use it, but I just I mean I do order stuff from Revzilla. I think they're a good company, so I don't mind putting an affiliate link down there because that's where I order my stuff from. I, I think that I can make money off of it. I think that if you buy something with my affiliate link, then I will like then make a portion of that. I really actually don't know. They gave it to me back when I did the Get On Moto Fest in Texas, which was my first road trip with the Schubert, by the way. <laughs> they gave it to me back then. And I just like, then they asked me like months later, like, hey, um, so did you ever use that affiliate link? And I was like, no, I really don't understand how it works. Because <laughs> let me tell you, oh, poor dog, get out of the road. No, and don't chase the bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like slowing down to him so I don't hit him. He starts chasing me. Anyway, regardless, it's down there if you want to check it out. But again, this is not paid for. This is not sponsored. I bought, I paid money for this helmet. I bought this helmet. I'm pissed. I'm pissed because I had to buy two helmets. And guess what? Revzilla, they sell Schubert helmets. I, <laughs> they, they sell them. So I'm just like, I don't know how happy they're going to be with me just like absolutely trashing this other helmet that they also have for sale on their website. But I don't know, man. That's just me. I'm going to like put the affiliate link up once and they're going to be like, oh, actually we're good you can go ahead and you can go ahead and fuck off we don't we don't need somebody trashing our product now we'll see what happens man i don't have any problem with anybody receiving free products to review that doesn't bother me at all it's just really not my thing so I, just because i'm just like i don't do it doesn't mean i have anything against anybody else doing it i don't at all i support all my friends who who do this for a living and they get their products to review for free it's like i'm probably just too dumb to figure it out to be totally honest with you like if they wanted to send me a free shoey i'd be like hell yeah but the problem is instead of like asking for it or trying to get a shoey for free i end up just going like i, I don't want to wait i'm just gonna buy it because i just feel weird asking for it which is why i'm a my, i make for a really crappy influencer <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at this. This is not this is not my forte. Like part of it is because I want to give like a completely un my complete unbiased thoughts on something, you know, and I can't I feel like I wouldn't be able to even if they said I could. It's the same thing with this bike, like the Pan America. This is not from Harley Davidson. Like if you guys didn't know, I don't own this bike. This is not my personal motorcycle. This bike is on a long-term test. For me to do a review from Burt's Barracuda Harley. It's actually from Burt's Black Widow uh, down in Port Charlotte. They're the ones who gave it to me. And I'm doing a long-term review on it, and I'm allowed to say whatever I want about the bike. I don't take a single dollar from Burt's Harley Davidson. Not one single dollar. I just have a good relationship with those guys. They're nice guys, uh, and they let me have these bikes to, like, wail on and ride around and, and, and do a completely unbiased reviews on. And they love it because they believe in the product that they're giving me and they just like the way I do business. And I never take a single dollar from them because I feel like if I did, then I, not that they would expect me to do something more, but I feel like it would be expected to give like a, a mainly positive review. And I have, I've given bikes that I've gotten from Burt's Harley Davidson, from Burt's Barracuda and Burt's uh, uh, Black Widow in Port Charlotte. I've given them negative reviews before. I, I don't know, man. Like I said, I'm just not very good at this sort of thing. <laughs> Anyway, I really like the Pan America. This bike is freaking awesome. Uh, I don't feel like I've been riding it long enough to give a full review. I've only put like 700 miles on the thing, but so far it's pretty awesome. I just not, that to me, that's not enough time to, to do a review on it. I don't feel comfortable because with me and bikes, like you gotta let some of that newness wear off because dude, I don't know how anybody just like jumps on a two wheeled motorized vehicle and doesn't immediately love it. Cause that's how I am. If it's got a motor and two wheels, I just jump on that thing and I'm like, let's freaking go, boys. I like bike. And then it's only later on that maybe I'm like, oh, maybe I don't like this bike as much as some of the other ones. All right, y'all. That's going to about do it for this one on my very, very, very angry negative review of the Schubert C3 Lite. What a absolutely awful helmet that I am very angry that I spent money on. Terrible. Terrible. Zero out of a possible five flips. The lowest score I have ever given. Guys, that's gonna about do it for this one. Thanks for sticking around and listening to me yell about wasting my money on a helmet for 15 minutes or however long this video ends up being. Till next time, y'all, keep it weird.